Happy Sunday morning. Welcome to Collider Mailbag. I'm your host, John Roca. Hey, what did I say on Saturday? I'm going to say the same thing today. July 4th is about independence, and I've released Cobster, or I mean, Christian Rubicaba from, from Don't behind you the dare. camera to hey. come in front of the camera here to be on this episode of Collider Mailbag. Thanks for taking the time, man. Oh, of course, man. Yeah, I wasn't busy at all. Thank you for having me on here. Uh, you brought me and Cody on here to, to take some questions, answer yep. some questions, and then take a look at this board where you guys look at comments of people saying how much they love you. That's weird. Yeah, well, this is weird. I didn't build that board. And uh -oh. I've got ideas Whoa. for that board. Trust me on that. Okay. I'm going to make Adam put a uh, visual, a big TV here, and we'll make changes, uh, uh, much to his chagrin. You hear that, uh, he's, Adam? He's already shaking his head no. Uh, but uh, uh, Cody was telling me yesterday you have a film that's coming out. Yes, we made a feature. No, it's a short film. Yeah, mm -hmm. we got a short film. It's out this weekend. It's on Amateur Films. It's a okay. nice little sci-fi thriller starring Cody. Nice. And uh, our good friend Brian Perez. I co-directed it with Cody, he okay. wrote it. It's great. Our friend Alex Marzonia did the score. It's nice. our first short film with an original score. It's up. We loved it, and uh, we loved making it. That's so great. Uh, if you guys want to go check it out, or if you just really hated our, my answers for <laughs> this episode and you want to go crap on it, then go ahead and do that too, but just give it a watch. Yeah, you're an engineer and editor here at Collider. What else do you do? Mostly editor, but okay. ed engineer sometimes when they do spoiler stuff. Gotcha. Uh, shoot stuff, um, you know, comic book shopping. Mm -hmm. I just did that. Uh, the, the Jake Gyllenhaal one? The Jake Gyllenhaal in this okay. whole season which was a lot of fun to yeah. do. Uh, but yeah, uh, all the behind the scenes stuff is uh, me and the boys. Just in case you're wondering, when they mention Christian, when they mention Ruvalcaba, mm -hmm. this is who they're talking about and what he does here yeah, at Collider. Especially if there's a typo, it's probably me. <laughs> all right. Well, you guys know how Mailbag works. You send your questions in. We put the call out on social media, on Twitter and on Instagram, and include that hashtag Collider Mailbag on your response to them. Makes it easier for me to find. Or you can email us at mailbag at collider.com. That's how you can send your questions in. I uh, poured through you everything you guys sent. There was about 20 to 25. Sent them on uh, to uh, Christian. Christian shows out five that he liked, and we're going to answer them here on the show. Are you ready? Yeah. Let's do this thing. All right. Uh, our first question is a Twitter question from at BadgerCheese84. Uh, hey, gang. Happy 4th. Same to you. John, thank you for your service. Well, that's very kind. No, with thank the, you, John. With the, yeah, thank you very much. With the streaming wars heating up, do you think studios will create limited series based on their IPs? I think about movies that would be great in a well-done series. Predator, Aliens, Robocop, Terminator. Mm. Well, well. What's your answer here, Chris? Well, I don't think those movies in particular okay. should have, uh, I don't know, a series. I, I, I want to see those in the theaters. Mm -hmm. Spe specifically, I think out of all of those, the Alien franchise is my favorite. Uh, I do love Paul Verhoeven, and the original Robocop is oh, wonderful. Yeah. I like the first Terminator. I think they can do different things. I know I didn't watch the Sarah, Chrono Sarah Carner Chronicles, Chronicles yeah, but yeah, I yeah. know people were kind of fans of that. I guess it just depends. You because those are such big scale movies. I could I could see out of all of those IPs, uh, Predator being uh, yeah. the one that they do a series for because you just need a big tall dude, and there's not it's not too heavy on effects right. and whatnot. But everything else I feel like is a much bigger scale. Yeah, I hear what you're saying. I think Aliens is where I fall actually because of what we're seeing now with Sandman, the TV series on Netflix. There, I imagine that's gonna have a large scope as well yeah. with some interesting special effects and some uh, well done uh, uh, effects overall for the mm -hmm. for the film, and or for the show rather, and it'll expand, it'll create worlds and what have you. So I right. think Aliens is certainly possible. Maybe go back to the core first Alien where it's like separate small yeah. uh, things happening and then you can explore the mythology of it in a smaller scale might be more interesting than because obviously I feel like Ridley hasn't quite gotten it right uh, in these last two installments. That's what happens, I think, when you kind of listen to fan backlash. Because mm. I loved Prometheus, and then people were saying there wasn't enough Alien, and then he did the Alien thing, Alien Covenant, kind of retconned the Prometheus stuff. Now people are like, no, we like the Prometheus. So yeah. it's like, there, it's a lot of back and forth. Uh, there was actually recently, I think, I don't, I don't know if it was like a fan series. Mm -hmm. It might have been on like IGN of Alien. There was yeah. like a bunch of different short films that I thought was really cool and yeah. creative. But I think at the end of the day, it, it just depends on where the series is going to be distributed because mm -hmm. Netflix can pour out stuff left and right or if it's like a CBS All Access or if Terminator is going to be on Disney Plus. Right. You know, I don't know. Yeah. They wouldn't do that, but uh, I don't know. It just it just depends. If HBO got their hands on some of these, then that's kind of a different story because HBO right. is kind of my go-to. Okay. Yeah. Robocop would be interesting as well, I think, as a series. If you're following this guy or this girl's yeah. progression into becoming a Robocop and what that's like episode to episode to episode, mm -hmm. 
episode mm-hmm. and then what the changes are yeah. and you know there's a lot to explore with that with changing crime with the changing government all mm-hmm. of that is in there to explore if they get it right I wasn't a big fan of the reboot or the, the whatever yeah. that was, yeah, it was but yeah, but but you know there's there's enough there in the original that you can yeah, play it with could, I think. it could be like real dirty and grimy yeah. you know if they took if they took that sort of because that first movie is so wonderfully done and mm-hmm. that city is just a, a city you don't want to be part of right and if they took that idea and made it and made it really really grounded i think that could be yeah. pretty cool i'd yeah. buy that for a dollar hey i right. had to slide that it's in there. from the movie well, what's our second question oh i gotta read yeah, it yeah yeah that's oh, how this works i can't read okay on. this one is uh, an email <laughs> from damon ward he says hey collider i think some people or reviewers specifically can let their expectations cloud their judgment of a movie for the better or worse if it's their it, it's if it they're it's as if they're reviewing their own expectations or biases instead of taking what the movie gives them can you name a time uh, when you had such so much expectation from movies or the promotional items from a movie that it clouded your judgment for the better or worse? Thanks, and stay MF sweaty. I can't say MF. <laughs> no, you can't. No, no. Uh, you can anything come into mind? Well, I mean, when I got expectation, I think I've been let down a few times through the years with movies, certainly. Um, some of the best trailers don't always lead to the best movies. Yeah. And you, yeah. you sometimes I'll go back. Like Batman vs Superman was a fantastic trailer. Mm-hmm. Uh, Dawn of Justice, and I did not like that movie at all. Oh, I yeah. was are you, hyped. Are you talking about like the very first Comic Con one where yes. he was like the red capes are coming? Yes. Yeah, that's a cool trailer. Yeah, really, and I was really like, really cool oh, this is, this is creepy as. Yeah. As, uh, where are they gonna go with this? Mm-hmm. I can't believe they're throwing this element into a superhero right. movie. And in the end, I was not impressed by it at all. There are still some good scenes in that movie, but mm-hmm. overall was a massive disappointment yeah um i would probably point to spider amazing spider-man 2 i actually was on board yeah. with jamie fox doing electro electro is one of quietly one of my favorite spider-man villains mm-hmm. and then when it happened i was completely let down by that you know like when the electricity put his teeth together <laughs> that, that, <laughs> no, that's didn't. science right yeah. Because the molecular totally science. Yeah. Yeah. Um, no, that's why I don't watch trailers anymore. Yeah, you don't. You're a legend lot, for not knowing. A lot of that. these uh, a lot of I don't know about a legend, but well, people uh, it's, Collider knows but everyone everybody talks Collider about it knows here. that you don't watch trailers. See right? you hear that, Mom? I'm a legend around these parts. <laughs> um, no, that's why because a lot of these things can mis- be misleading, and I think mm. that is for the better or worse, because you've we've seen movies where like uh, you put Avengers in Infinity War Endgame where they put stuff in the trailer. Oh, right, good point. That aren't in the movie to specifically throw you off because they want to savor that yeah they want to savor um all those little different details whereas like you you brought up amazing spider-man 2 i mean even the first amazing spider-man uh, half of the stuff that was promoted in the trailers mm. weren't in there True. or even amazing spider-man 2 again the very last shot of yep. the movie is in the trailer yep. and uh, i mean the number of times that i've seen a trailer i'm like oh okay that's not what it was at all i mean uh, fantastic four uh, mm. uh, uh josh tranks is like this is not the movie that they were oh yeah good at all because that movie was just you know whatever was was done to it in the in the mm-hmm. post but um yeah i mean uh, just a lot of stuff just stay away from trailers don't do it <laughs> like, honestly you don't need to watch a star wars trailer you're gonna see it maybe not after last jedi but you, you you're gonna there, there's certain movies out there that yeah. i'm like yeah i'm gonna see it knives out trailer just came out the other day yeah. i'm not watching it because it's ryan johnson the cast is great i'm gonna go see it right, you know, right. i don't need to be sold on it if it if it's something that i'm kind of on the fence with like if it's like justice league mm-hmm. when that was kind of coming out i wasn't really on board so i'll watch the trailer i saw the trailer eh, uh, maybe yeah. maybe not okay we'll see all right rogue one is that way i think too that first oh, rogue yeah. one trailer was mm-hmm. dark and gritty and i thought this was going to be fantastic yeah and then you find out that they made some post uh, post-production changes to it mm-hmm. and you're like oh this isn't with the trailer that oh this is the movie that i thought i was getting right so certainly there was a little although i love rogue one there was a little bit of disappointment that i didn't get the darker grittier rogue one mm-hmm. that i that that tr- first trailer teased would have been nice to see you talk about reviewers uh Specifically, like their expectations cloud their judgment. Yeah, they, they, sometimes I think it's possible, but I think for me personally, I try not to let that happen. I try mm-hmm. to walk into a movie theater or like open minded. Yeah. Am I going to enjoy myself? That's all I care about. Yeah, I, I mean, I think when I, uh, a few years ago, when like when I first started getting into this space, I would go into every movie like, you know, like, oh my God, I can't wait to see this. Now it's right. like, you know, whether we go to screenings or we've like, if you go to a premiere, mm-hmm. it's just like, it's just, it's just a movie. It's actually <laughs> being in this space is kind of like dampened everything that mm-hmm. I, it, it, it's just hard. It's just, that's just how it is. Yeah. And so everything I go in and I'm like, okay, let's, 
hope that if this yeah. is good, great. Uh, mm -hmm. Now, Godzilla King of the Monsters was not the case. I was jumping up and down for that movie. That was true. I, I, I loved every yeah. single second of something like that. Um, but yeah, I, like I, I just just go in, you know, hoping that it's going to be a good movie. But if you go in every single time to a movie mm. hoping it's going to be a masterpiece and you're going to be disappointed every time absolutely and I, I i try not to go in with like oh they better put this in there they better oh, put that yeah, in there yeah i try really hard not to do that so that i can just enjoy the director's vision and the writer's vision yeah. for this character mm -hmm. and if it works for me or not all right let's move on to our next question it's a twitter question at luis dp79 asks uh Clyde Mailbag, in honor of jumanji the next level appreciate that hashtag if you could be sucked into any video game and inhabit any character which one would it be? I'd go with Mario or Kratos. Oh, God. Kratos would be kind of dark. Um, okay. Uh, Mario would be a lot of fun. Uh, if we're, if we're like, if I'm going in to have fun. Yeah. Um, Mario would be great. I would say, uh, put me in a Pokemon game, put me as red or blue, and I'm catch I'm being the greatest that there ever was. Or if, um, if I'm fitting to my dark sensibilities, then I'm going to go Alan Wake because that's a wonderful oh. video game. Okay. Uh, it's not the most happy and go lucky one but uh that's just a cool world where you're killing ghosts with a flashlight it's called a alan wake alan wake yeah. interesting yeah check uh, it out it's never even stuff. heard of that one all right yeah um i'd have to throw red dead redemption obviously because you know i'm the outlaw duh uh i like that western stuff uh and dennis won't stop talking about that sequel he's like you you will love it and i remember playing about 45 minutes of it for the cloud gaming channel mm. and i loved it so okay to me personally that would be a fantastic world to be involved in mm -hmm. uh because of my love for westerns yeah uh, but un uh, the other one uncharted too Certainly to be yeah. Nathan Drake jumping in there, doing all the adventures. You want to do the be train scene? You want to be part of that nightmare? <laughs> yeah, that's, that's a good that's point. That's horrifying. Yeah, but it's still fun. It'd be and fun I think to that's jump the point. And, and parkour everywhere, but yeah. he's constantly dying. Yeah, like, true. All the time. But yeah, you know, I'd, I'd like to be Nathan Drake because yeah. he's just so charming. Well, he's that's such a, a charming man. You think, you think he's charming through the video game? Oh, yeah. You can sense the charm. Oh, come on. <laughs> Come on. Um, no, those are those are all really great. Uh, you know, like all the video games. Like I love horror video games. Mm. So like every time I, th I think of one, it's like Resident Evil, like put myself in those scenarios. But actually, mostly if I put myself in those, I'd like yeah. to try to figure out the puzzles because some of the older games are very puzzle heavy. Yeah. And trying to figure out because I, I like puzzle stuff. All right. You know, I think that's pretty cool. Yeah. Well, if I go female, I go Tomb Raider. Tomb Raiders are mm. awesome. That's that's my one addiction of all the video games that survived every decade of my life is Tomb Raider. I have bought every single one that's ever come out wow. and spent weekends trying to figure it out and play it. For whatever reason, I just have an interest in it and I love doing it. Nice. Uh, and the last two have been fantastic. So okay. yeah, I really pretty good enjoy the, those. I'll put in Grand Theft Auto V because violence. <laughs> oh, shit. How about that? There it is. Perfect. All right, what's our next one? Uh, this is the fourth one, right? Yeah. All right, uh, this is a Twitter question uh, coming from JPEG. 1098. I think this is Jonathan Peck. What's up, Jonathan? Mm -hmm. uh, will Bill and Ted 3, uh, with Bill and Ted started filming, uh, what film series with two entries should make a third film in the series? My my choices are Wayne's World 3 and 28 Years Later, hashtag Collider Mailbag. Great question. Yeah, good question. Well, it, was, it would be, what, 28 months later would be the next yeah, one, right? Yeah, Because days, weeks, and things? And that's fun. That's a perfect one. I just rewatched uh, 28 Days and 28 Weeks mm. Later. I think both of those movies are really, really great. Oh, they're fantastic. I would... I. I, I, they've been saying it like every year there's a story comes out oh yeah we got an idea we got an idea I yeah. don't think it's ever going to happen I think 28 months later would be perfect uh, yeah. I think there's so much that they can do with that world I would love to see Danny Boyle come back because how how low budget that yeah. first movie was yeah. but uh, I don't know the directors for the second movie even though I do enjoy it I, I, he, I think he did a really great job but mm -hmm. also if they got a, a third director with a different style it's kind of a great little trilogy with three different styles yeah. of telling this world and then Wayne's World 3 would obviously be really really cool too but i mean mike myers and uh dana carvey's relationship in yeah. their personal lives yeah. isn't like the best who knows <laughs> if they throw a lot of money yeah, i don't know maybe with bill and ted three they'll 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 dig up uh wayne's world yeah, the series and do mm -hmm. a third one. Who knows? That's certainly possible. I mean, I, I, they released images today as we went to record this mm. episode of Bill and Ted leaving that phone booth. Uh, yes. And as old men, 50 years old. Mm -hmm. So it's a little strange. Uh, I, I would, uh, Wayne's World would be a little strange if they've moved on and they had kids and what have you. And mm -hmm. then, okay, I might accept that idea of them getting together for one last mission. But yeah. I don't want to see a, a guy in his 50s still wearing the flannel doing weird stuff. It's just a little weird to me. Okay. But but I, I could accept it, I suppose, down the 
the road. Uh, I threw in Tron Legacy. I would love to see another Tron movie. Mm. I like that second Tron movie. It isn't as good, obviously. Uh, the first one isn't as good as people think either. It's a good mm. film. Mm -hmm. It's not crazy good. The yeah. second one, I think I had a lot of interesting elements, and I think the CG has improved, where you could have that Jeff Bridges, younger Jeff Bridges character mm. look a lot better, like we saw in Grand Moff Tarkin, a yeah. little better well, with that uh, special yeah, effects. Hopefully, hopefully better than that. Yeah, yeah <laughs> as, as the years progress. But like, I would like to see that. I think there's a lot of things to explore there. I thought National Treasure, I can't believe there was not a third one. Those there, first two did a nice job. There wasn't I thought a third one? There was not a third one. He didn't have sex with Declaration of Independence? So he the, didn't. I, I didn't even say Declaration of Independence all the way. <laughs> wow. There we go. He did not There's not water in this water bottle. There you um, go. I see on yours you have Kill Bill 3. I'm looking at your I notes. Do. Kill Bill that's, Volume 3. That's a great poll. I yeah. think that would be really... I know, I remember he, he talked about... They, they would focus on, um, what's her name's daughter? Yeah, the daughter of uh, Vivica Fox. Yes. Um, yeah, who witnesses her mother die. Yeah, that could be really yeah. interesting. That's also like, do they touch it? Do you, do you come back for that? I mm. mean, obviously Tarantino like has to has to be involved for that. Yeah. But that could be that could be really, really cool. Interesting, yeah. And we'll see what if there's a third Incredibles. I don't think you need it. I think one and two are fine. You mm -hmm. don't need a third one. But I could see the, the uh, desire for people to see a third yeah. one, certainly. But Kill Bill Volume 3 is the hill I would die on. Talking about Incredibles... Uh, uh, yep. uh, they did Monsters University and Monsters Inc. I yep. think uh, a Monsters Inc. sequel would be really cool because I, I okay. really loved University. Yeah. I thought University was really, really good. Mm -hmm. So seeing a third story to that, I mean, obviously I prefer like more original stories than right. anything, but I think that would be pretty cool. Yeah. Well, yeah. I mean, uh, how how has uh, Pixar done with third installments? We have Toy Story 3, but you also have Cars 3. So I don't know, you can balance those out, I guess, mm -hmm. in a way. So we'll see. Uh, down there, any any other ones on your end or no? Uh, I can't think okay. of any other ones. No, I I mean I always thought it, because it chapter two is coming out. Oh yeah. I was like, what if they sneak up on us and they're like, surprise, we're doing a chapter three. Oh. How like, do you end chapter two to give you an idea of chapter three? I mean, you do half of the adult story. Okay. And you save it, or if they just compl go in completely new territory. Okay. You know, and they and they veer off from the crazy drug inf influenced book. You okay. Know? So. I don't know. Maybe the turtle shows up. That's possible, too. Hey, you know, Let's you go. never know. All right, our last uh, question here. It's an email from George Bate. Uh, he writes, Hi, Mr. Roca and guest. Hope you're both having a nice day so far. We are. My question is, has the fact that you report on, discuss, and analyze films for a living furthered your interest and enthusiasm for movies, or has it done the opposite? I can see how it could make movie watching a chore in some ways, but also see how it can expose you to different kinds of artists and their visions and really cement your interest in movies. Thanks for taking my question and take care. Nope, question. done. Killed it. Killed it. I have no spirit. I have no soul. Save me. They are holding me hostage. No. Um, it's a little bit here and there. Oh, boy. I, have to, I do have to, like, kind of constantly remind myself like this is like what i do for yeah. a living so yeah. it's just like okay you know get off your ass and, and you know just enjoy yourself mm. um but uh, it depends uh, luckily I, I mean I, I i don't consider myself a critic i don't go to these screenings as like work i go mm. as like unless unless i get to go to like a screening and I have to cut spoilers right, right, right. that's a cool excuse to go see a movie early for for work Analyzing, critiquing, and stuff is not usually, not anymore at least, something that I haven't, I don't know, because there's so much negativity mm -hmm. out there that, you know, even if you focus all your positivity, everyone's like, oh, you just like everything. And it's just, I have friends that like talking about the stuff that they enjoy. Mm -hmm. You know, they don't want to just crap on everything that's out there. And uh, yeah, I don't know, like, it, it's also just ruined social media in general mm, there's so yeah. much space like no movie anymore can just be fine yeah. everything either is the worst movie ever or it's a masterpiece mm -hmm. you know there's just no level of fineness so yeah. it's it's a toss-up I, I have to keep myself in, in check sometimes but yeah well i think a lot of us walk into this business loving movies because we chose to watch them when we wanted to watch them. Yeah. What the job does sometimes is force you to go see films or watch certain films that you may not have an interest in or you may not have wanted to watch yeah. or wanted to watch on your own time, but you're forced to watch earlier than usual. Mm -hmm. So that can affect if you enjoy it or not. I know for me, I rarely take the time now to go see a film uh, at night after work like I used to. Yeah. I think I think my desire, the work is so busy. There's so much that goes on here that when I get off here, the last thing I want to do is go to a movie theater because yeah. All I've done all day is talk about movies. That's the difference between like you and me, though. Yeah. Like there are some movies you have to go and right, see. Right. You know, I know. I mean, being friends with Mark and Christian and working with them mm -hmm. for so many years, they've had to go and force themselves. Yeah, going to see all these big blockbuster movies or movies that they're very much looking forward to yeah. is nice. But they also have to go see other movies that they don't want to see mm -hmm. that aren't really really good. And so on that, like, I commend you know all you guys for doing that because that's you know that's I don't. Yeah. There's some movies I just know. 
no thank you <laughs> um but uh yeah. yeah like i mean there was a there was a year where uh when i was like really really into it i yeah. saw like a movie for 13 or 14 weeks straight pain by the way wow. like wasting all of my money seeing yeah. all these movies and like maybe like five out of those are actually really good it's just because i wanted to see everything that was coming out see and i'm i'm different than you i could go four months straight and watch two or three movies a week in the theater oh wow yeah, yeah. i would not have a problem with that mm -hmm. i did festivals before it was ever a festivals were a thing mm -hmm. i would go do festivals and spend entire days watching movies because oh, yeah. i love it i love movies but with the job the extra stuff that you have to do mm -hmm. it can at times Times feel like a chore yeah. uh, and I, no way am I saying I don't want this I love this job it's fun to talk about movies and and be paid to do that it's really great but there are but the human element of it is like well my free will of choosing what movie to go see mm -hmm. a Nazi does kind of get a little uh, uh, I don't know dented because yeah. I do have to go see certain things I'm required to see certain yeah, things yeah and the humans we work with are just oh, <laughs> Jesus every know. single one of them there it is <laughs> well no some of them are cool yeah some of them are but cool. not all of them okay Okay, fair enough. All right, well, there you go. That's our. That's a perfect way to end this Sunday Collider. Can I go back to work back. now? Yes, yes. Uh, Christian, where can they find you, man? Uh, you guys can find me on Twitter at Christian Ruby. Um, uh, our short film, Teddy, just released this past weekend. Again, if you guys want to check it out, that'd be awesome. Um, you know, should support uh, indie filmmaking. I, yeah, I don't sure, know. sure. Yeah. We're and just trying wangers? to make cool things. Yeah, and we do uh, Wangers. We got, a, uh, we got a podcast, The Wanger Show. Patreon.com slash Wangers is where we're doing a bunch of stuff. There you go. All right. You guys can follow me at The Rogue Says on Twitter and on Instagram. Thanks again for sending your questions in. They were a lot of fun to answer this weekend. You know how we do it. We put the call out on social media whenever Dorian gets around to it. Put that hashtag Coletta Mailbag on those questions. It makes it easier for me to find. Or if you hate social media, you can email us at mailbag at collider.com. I'll pour through those questions, pick out some, and who knows? They might end up on the show being answered by us. All right, take care. Have yourselves a great rest of your Sunday, and we'll see you next week with two other Collider Mailbag episodes. Till then. Ooh. Adam in the booth! Yeah. Woo!